Hey guys, welcome back to another Warzone 2 video. In today's video, we are going to be talking about everything Warzone 2 as well as Modern Warfare 2 Season 1. So, as I promised in my last video, talking about all the details, everything you need to know about Season 1 of Modern Warfare, today's video is going to be solely focused on Warzone 2. That way, we can kind of separate this out. That way, you know, we're not having a giant, like, 50 minute video here. And that way, if you guys are only interested in Warzone, you can stick around for this video. Whereas, if you guys only want to hear about Modern Warfare 2, you guys can go and check that one out. So, like I said, this one is about Warzone 2, going over everything that is happening within this Season 1, as well as with the launch of Warzone 2. So here we go. So first off, they put out uh, a roadmap for this. So here on this roadmap, here is what they show for Warzone 2.0. So a lot of this stuff will be the same thing as within Modern Warfare 2. So like the Battle Pass will be the same thing, the new weapons, the new operator. Uh, we also have like the uh, the new weapons, operators, as well as the bundles and stuff like that. So like all those uh, extra things, the, all that stuff you can get in the store, all that same stuff applies. But specifically for Warzone 2.0, here's what they say is coming at launch. We're going to get a new map, which we all know is El Mazra. We get a new mode, DMZ. We get a new Gulag. We have two new vehicles. We have a Heavy Chopper and a Hummer EV. And then we have new game features, which is Aquatic Combat, Circle Collapse, Proximity Chat, new buy stations, a third-person playlist, and Interrogation within the Battle Royale. So there we go. That is the base overview from the roadmap that we have of Warzone 2.0, but let's get into their whole huge blog post going over all the details, everything you need to know about it. So here we go, they say a new era begins. Ready up and prepare to drop in. Starting on November 16th, Season 1 of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0 will deliver action on all the fronts. The next iteration of the massive free-to-play battle royale experience featuring the much-anticipated DMZ mode, reimagined maps and multiplayer, and an additional Spec Ops mission prior to the first raid episode. There will be plenty of content across both games through the all-new Battle Pass, football-themed event, and more. Okay, here we go. They say Season 1 for Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2 will go live on November 16th at 10am Pacific Time, and Modern Warfare 2 will receive its Season 1 update on November 14th at 10am Pacific Time. So on 10am Pacific Time on November 14th, so Monday, which is tomorrow, is when you can preload and, and pre-download this, and it says all platforms can preload Warzone 2.0 starting on November 14th at 10am Pacific Time. So that's when the update will go live, so that's when you're going to have a massive update for Modern Warfare 2 as well as you can also jump in and you can pre-download Warzone 2.0 because it's leaked that uh, Warzone 2.0, at least on Xbox, is going to be about 115 gigabytes. So if you guys don't have, you know, the, like, top of the line, best of the best internet, I would recommend preloading it, especially even if you do, I would recommend preloading it that way as soon as, you know, the game goes live on November 16th at 10 a.m. Pacific time, you can jump in and play Warzone 2.0, you're not stuck waiting around, waiting for it to download or anything like that, it's already just installed on your system, ready to go. So here we go, they say Warzone 2.0 overview. They say, all Mazra, home of Warzone 2.0. Use 18 major points of interest to plot out your victory in Battle Royale or explore them en route to extraction in the brand new DMZ experience. Ready for the new era. Masses of gameplay innovations and new features make Warzone 2.0 an incredible experience built on community learning since Call of Duty Next. A shift in perspective. Third person playlist coming in season to Warzone 2.0. For the first time in Warzone history, we welcome fans of third person Battle Royale action during Season 1. Here we go. Welcome to Al Mazra, new big map. Central to the Modern Warfare 2 universe, the city of Al Mazra within the United Republic of Adol is your first battleground for Warzone 2.0. Those who are playing Modern Warfare 2 right now are getting some serious training on Al Mazra. For example, the following multiplayer maps are subsections of this massive region. We have Al Bagra Fortress, which is a core map. Embassy, also a core map. Zargwa Hydroelectric, core map. Tarak, both core and a battle map, Seraph Bay, another battle map, and Saeed, another battle map. We already gave a brief overview of the Al Mazra map in another article. You guys can check that out. I'll try and link that in the description. They say expect an expanded map guide before launch. So my guess is that'll either come out tomorrow or it'll come out Tuesday uh, for this because Warzone is launching on Wednesday. So here we go. Warzone 2.0 innovations update since Call of Duty next. Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 is ready to make its impact as a rebuilt, free-to-play, free-for-everyone take on on the Battle Royale game that has redefined the Call of Duty franchise. Before the Season 1 launch, an entire blog will be dedicated to diving deeper into the new features and mechanics that have been updated since what was shown at Call of Duty Next. For now, here is a taste of the biggest highlights we can share. Loadouts are not leaving. 
Boo! I actually really uh, I hate this one. I made a whole video about that. You guys can go and check that out. They say custom loadouts are back for Warzone 2.0. Similar to the original Call of Duty Warzone, loadouts play a large role in what makes this game unique. And in this new era, players will have quicker access to their loadout's primary benefit, the primary weapon. There are three ways to earn a loadout or at least a primary weapon. Shops. Players can use the in-match cash at the shops, a new name for the buy station, to purchase their primary weapon from their created loadouts. There is a loadout drop public event. Loadout drops will drop in all Mazra in the middle of the battle royale matches. However, these are not limited or assigned to individual squads, but instead can be accessed by any players. And there are strongholds and black sites where players can also earn their loadout in the early game as a reward for clearing a stronghold or a black site. Additionally, in-match cash can be used to purchase your primary weapon from created loadouts. Oh boy, yeah, well, you know, no sense in me really diving into this one too much here, I already covered that in another video, but honestly, I think that kind of sucks, and, uh, and I wish they hadn't have done this, but uh, it is what it is. Looting mechanics, battle royale remaining traditional, new backpack system, and DMZ. Warzone 2.0 will implement a new backpack system fully integrated for DMZ and streamlined for battle royale modes. In battle royale, like the previous Warzone, supply boxes will throw out items to pick up. When a player interacts with any other loot container, such as a duffel bag, medical case, they will function with a loot menu. When a player dies, they will drop their primary weapon on the ground and their backpack, which contains the rest of their content and is accessed through a loot menu. So, okay, that's pretty good. You know, that's not too bad. It's kind of going to be a little bit more like looting, like we had in Blackout. They say defining the new Gulag. After Next, so referring to Call of Duty Next here, the new Gulag received some changes over the past two months while still being grounded within a traditional Warzone experience. The Gulag will be a 2v2 environment where randomly paired duos must coordinate to take down their opposition. All pairs will receive a predefined loadout. At launch, this will be a pistol or a shotgun, a lethal grenade, and a tactic grenade with highly effective weaponry and gear placed towards the map's center. The Gulag will also include a Jailer who will appear in the middle of the match to help speed up combat. Defeating the Jailer will return all four Gulag prisoners back into the Battle Royale, which offers a dilemma. Do both duos agree to wait and fight this powerful enemy together, or does one get greedy and try to go for the elimination victory? Instead of a traditional overtime mechanic, if neither team nor the Jailer is eliminated after a brief period of time, all four operators lose. Whoa, okay. So let's discuss that for a second. So honestly, I mean, I've seen a lot of people talk about this on Twitter. It seems like obviously the best option is just for all four players to team up and, and to take down the Jailer and, you know, to take down this AI here. So it's like, hmm, okay, that would be interesting that, uh, you know, you do that and all four players come back. But uh, I honestly, I'm like, this is the Call of Duty community here. Like, this is an online video game. How often do we actually think this is going to happen here? Especially because you're also getting paired up with just a random duo. So you're also, you know, just with some random other person. You know, you're not uh, doing like a 1v1. You're literally with some random and you're going up against another pair. So it's, you know, even if like you're playing quads and both you and uh, another one of your teammates die, you it's not going to be you two together in uh, the Gulag. It's going to be you and a random. And then on that other team, it's going to be another random and uh, another random. So for this one, I could see this one, you know, it's like, oh, hey, you know, you talk to all the other people. You're like, hey, they're like, you know, you, you, uh, you teabag a little bit. You're like, hey, yeah, I'm, I'm friendly. I'm friendly. I'm friendly. Let's take down the jailer. And then while all of you are shooting the jailer, one person gets greedy and then just shoots the other two enemy players and boom, then you win. And pff, so I could totally see that happening. Or if, you know, it gets down to the point where it's like, you don't think you're going to either kill the jailer, then you're like, hmm, I'm just going to take out the enemy team. Or while the enemy team is taking out the jailer, you go ahead and boom, and you take out the enemy team and boom, and you can get sent back as well. So I don't know. I think that's what's going to happen a lot of the time. There's going to be a lot of backstabbing within that. It's going to be like, hey, let's uh, let's team up to take this guy down. And then all of a sudden, boop, nope, you get shot in the back or get assassinated or something like that or betrayed, basically. But next up, they say AI combatants in Battle Royale, only at strong holds black sites gulag overtime the gulag is just one of three places where players can fight ai combatants as they will be restricted to guard specific locations the other two locations are strongholds and black sites which are clearly designated on your in-game tack map to opt to, to allow you to opt into engagements with ai combatants during each match several strongholds will be activated around the map squads can visit these areas to fight ai combatants the first team to complete a stronghold must disarm a bomb and will earn a key to a black site in their custom loadout successive teams must eliminate a specific number of defenders 
characters, AI, or players, and will earn their custom loadout, but not a black sight key. Black sights are a more dangerous form of strongholds, but they offer a permanent weapon blueprint reward and even more in-match items for those who clear it out. These are available only via black sight key given to the first team that clears one of the active strongholds. Ooh, wow. Okay, that can be kind of interesting. Uh, that'd be. It sounds like a fun little kind of like almost mini game within the battle royale. So that's pretty cool. Additional new features: aquatic combat, new vehicles, and fuel mechanic, and more. Not everything will be different from what we saw at Next. In addition to some other new features, expect the following in Warzone 2.0. Circle Collapse. There may not be only one safe zone. In Battle Royale modes, there can be up to three circles within the collapse, which will ultimately re-merge for the final showdown. Prepare to adjust your strategies accordingly, as this feature is randomized in each match. Proximity Chat. Got something to say? Comms are now open, so any in-game chatter can be picked up by any other squad. This can open up new ways to tackle engagements or mess with enemies who are holed up inside buildings. Okay, let me talk about this one for a second. This is, like, kind of a, a cheeky like fun new feature you know it's like ooh proximity chat like you know if uh, your enemy team is just like yakking over the mic you know you can actually hear them if you get close enough but at the same time i feel like this is almost gonna kind of make people want to use their mics less because if they can be heard like within a local proximity then people are just gonna be like oh okay i'm just gonna hop into a party or i'm gonna hop into like a discord call with all my buddies in here and especially like you know are they gonna force game chat like i i mean i don't know to me that's uh, that seems like a kind of a big oversight here is that it's like okay i mean it seems like a cool feature you know if it's used but if you don't force game chat then there's almost no point because then i feel like everybody in here is gonna be like oh well, i don't want to have a disadvantage by like actually talking to my friends or having call outs or whatever so let's just hop all on a discord call together so I don't know. We'll see how that works, but uh, something tells me they aren't going to force game chat. So, yeah, proximity chat. I'm sure there will be you know, some fun clips of it or whatever, but uh, I'm, I feel like a lot of the higher skill players are just going to be like, nope, and just opt out of this pretty much completely. They have assimilation. In squad-based DMZ modes, as well as special battle royale playlists, you have the choice to join up with enemy operators in a f and form a larger squad. We also have interrogation, which is in battle royale and DMZ only. In squad-based modes, intel is everything. Reveal enemy locations by successfully shaking down player-controlled enemies while they are downed. This is another thing. I, uh, I I talked to some friends about this, and I also saw people post about this on Twitter. I think this one is going to be kind of broken because it's like, well, what if you know the person you down and you go over and you start interrogating them? What if they just quit out of the match? You know, to me, that makes the most sense. It's like, hey, if you're playing as a squad and one of your buddies gets downed and an enemy comes up and tries to interrogate them, then it's like, hey, hey, hey just dashboard, dashboard, dashboard. And then, boom, they just like all F4, boom, right out of the game. And then, boom, their their player disappears. And then all of a sudden, it stops the interrogation. Like, will it go through even though they left? Or what will happen there? I think that'll be kind of a, a broken mechanic there, which I think, you know, at least in my opinion, Judging from what has happened in previous Call of Duty games, I can almost guarantee, yes, they will just disappear immediately and it'll stop the interrogation. And I think there'll have to be an update later that uh, like basically forces them either to not quit out right then. So if you're being interrogated, you cannot quit out. Or it will, uh, the player could quit out, but their body and it will still have them in there until the interrogation is done, until you can actually reveal the, you know, their teammates' locations and stuff, and then they'll disappear afterwards. So, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. Uh, they have a heavy chopper and a Hummer EV. So they say two new vehicles to find the refreshed vehicle roster for Warzone 2.0, an aerial powerhouse known as the Heavy Chopper, which can hover in the air without a pilot, and the new GMC Hummer EV pickup, a versatile means to cover uh, serious ground quickly with the whole squad in this electric super truck. Here's the full roster of vehicles you can expect to find in all Mazra. So I'm not going to, you know, go through the details of all of them, but we have an ATV, a UTV, a hatchback, an SUV, the GMC Hummer EV, so I'm just going to call it the Hummer. We have the cargo truck, a light helo, chopper, a heavy chopper, an RHIB, which is a maneuverable boat. We have the armored patrol boat. And then uh, they also say here we have a vehicle fuel and a gas station mechanic. No more unlimited fuel sources. All vehicles, yes, including the EV, use fuel over time. And when it runs out, that vehicle is no longer usable. Vehicles can be refilled either with gas cans found around the map or at gas stations. Gas stations can also repair body damage and tires, thereby restoring vehicle health however operators can also perform flat tire repairs anywhere in the world by interacting with individual tires okay uh, i think that's kind of hilarious though i saw some people clowning on twitter about this about you know even though it's a, an electric pickup truck you know the electric hummer you literally still have to take it to a gas station and fill it up with gas so i'm just like bro 
really? Like you guys didn't think that one through all that well, that uh, whole brand, you know, product integration there that, you know, it's just like, wow, it's literally just another reskinned vehicle. So whatever. We have aquatic combat. Whether by boat or beast stroke, operators can navigate waterways, rivers, and the open sea as part of their overall victory strategy. Remember, only sidearms, melee weapons, and throwing knives can be used while you're submerged. Also try using lethal and tactical equipment or on underwater for a wide variety of potentially destructive effects. Okay, so this is basically just like Blackout. Blackout, you could go underwater and you could use all, you could use all your weapons underwater. It didn't just have to be, you know, a sidearm or a throwing knife or a melee weapon, so... Eh, I guess it's whatever. They say the shops, which is a buy zone or buy station 2.0. Each buy station contains a unique set of items for purchase in limited quantity, including kill streaks, armor plates, and more. You can see these offerings and buy back fallen squad mates with a new interface. Next up, they talk about DMZ. DMZ, play your way in a completely new Warzone experience. In addition to traditional Warzone modes, Battle Royale solos, duos, trios, and quads, Warzone 2.0 will launch with a brand new experience known as DMZ. DMZ is an open world narrative focused extraction mode where operator squads have free reign to complete faction based missions, take on additional side objectives, engage with enemy operators or AI combatants, and search for valuable items all while fighting to survive towards exfiltration. Expect a tactical overview into this mode closer to its launch next week. Okay, coming in season, third person person playlists. As announced at Call of Duty Next, Warzone 2.0 will include third person playlists. This shift in perspective could completely change the battle royale fundamentals in Call of Duty, allowing for different visibility tactics and an altered but still action packed gameplay feel. Modern Warfare 2 owners can already get a taste of the third person now through the game's multiplayer. Third person playlists will be introduced into the battle royale weekly rotation starting during season one. Ooh, okay, that I feel like third person will be kind of fun, but uh, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what kind of people play it because I actually really like playing third person within Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer and uh, it basically just changes up the whole strategy of it. Is it's, uh, it's really good to be able to peek around corners and stuff. You could peek around corners with third person and uh, whereas, you know, if you're in first person, obviously you have to actually peek and you can get you can get shot. Whereas if you just peek with the camera, the enemy has no idea you're there. So kind of allows for some cheese kills and stuff where you can literally wait out enemies. You can see an enemy and they cannot see you. And you can just wait until they like come around a corner and then boom, you hurry and peek out and snipe them or kill them with a shotgun or something like that. Just, I don't know, kind of crazy. Uh, next up, let's talk about not just Warzone 2.0, but here we have some information about Warzone 1. Warzone Intermission, relaunch as Call of Duty Warzone Caldera. While we look ahead to Warzone 2.0, we also want to address our plans for Call of Duty Warzone, so Warzone 1. Access to Call of Duty Warzone continues as normal until November 16th when a short intermission takes place during the launch window of Warzone 2.0. At approximately 8 a.m. Pacific Time on November 16th, Call of Duty Warzone servers will temporarily go offline as Call of Duty Vanguard Season 5 concludes. At approximately 10 a.m. Pacific Time, Call of Duty Warzone 2.0 will be released as a part of Modern Warfare 2 Season 1. During this time, studio development resources led by Raven Software will be focused on ensuring the new Warzone 2.0 free-to-play uh, ecosystem is running ef effectively. At this time, you are encouraged to jump in and play Warzone 2.0 for free. Once the Warzone 2.0 ecosystem is fully stable and after a small development break for Thanksgiving, the developers who observe this US holiday, Warzone is planned to be relaunched as Call of Duty Warzone Caldera as a separate experience. This will happen at approximately 10 a.m. Pacific time on November 28th. As a token of our appreciation, those who have played Call of Duty Warzone will be gifted a few items to use in Warzone 2.0. Okay, so back up a second. Whoa, this is huge. So basically what they're saying here is that on Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific time, Warzone 1.0 is essentially being shut down. Just boom, boom, shut down, and it will not come back online until 10 a.m. Pacific time on November 28th. So for 12 days, Warzone 1.0 will be unavailable to play. You will not be able to play it. You will not be able to hop in and play Caldera. You will not be able to hop in and play Rebirth Island. And you also cannot play Fortune's Keep. You cannot play anything within Warzone 1.0. Basically, they're saying here, like, oh, we, it's because of uh, Warzone 2.0. You know, we want the servers to be, you know, uh, stable for this new game. And it's like, really? Is it really? Is that really the focus? Or is it you just want people, more people to jump over and play Warzone 2.0. It's basically Activision's sneaky way of going, hey, well, if you can't play Warzone 1, then uh, why don't you go ahead and download and play Warzone 2? Like, luckily it's free, but at the same, and I get it, it's like obviously they, you know, they want players to be playing the newest game, but for them to do that by handicapping the previous one and literally taking the previous one offline 
for like almost two weeks is, uh, in my opinion, kind of ridiculous because it's like, what if people don't want to do that? Or what if people, you know, don't have the greatest internet, don't want to download 115 gigabytes? What if people have data caps, you know, and they can't download that game within, you know, like a short amount of time, you know? I don't know. It's just like they already will probably already have Warzone 1.0 downloaded, so why can't they continue playing that? So, I don't know. Anyways, they talk about the relaunch of Call of Duty Warzone Caldera. Following the relaunch, you'll have two different Warzone games you can play. Warzone 2.0 and Warzone Caldera. I guarantee Warzone 2.0 is just going to be renamed Warzone eventually. They're going to stop calling it Warzone 2.0 probably in a couple months after it's already released, after they've already added a couple maps and everything, because uh, calling it Warzone 2.0 is going to get real old. Warzone 2.0's weapons, progression, and inventory system will be tied to the new Modern Warfare 2 content and systems. This is due to a combination of feedback from the community, technical limitations, and a need to simplify the newest and next Warzone to create a seamless player experience moving forward. Call of Duty Warzone Caldera continues as a separate game from Modern Warfare 2 and Warzone 2.0. Expect the following gameplay experiences within Warzone Caldera once it launches. Player progression, cross progression for XP and weapon XP, inventory battle pass content, weapons, store bundles, and other purchases from Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2019, Warzone, Black Ops Cold War, and Vanguard will be accessible only within Warzone Caldera and within their respective games. So if you've bought bundles within any of these games, you cannot use them in Warzone 2.0 or Modern Warfare 2. We've known about this for a little while now. They've kind of you know started talking about this over the last like four or five months where they've uh, they finally said that. Like we had like those Terminator bundles, which a lot of people were like, why would I spend $20 on a bundle when here in like three or four months, I'm not going to be able to use it in the newest game. So everything going forward now with warzone 2.0 will be a brand new experience your progression your xp inventories weapons bundles literally everything will get it will still you'll still have access to it just not within this new game everything will essentially get reset and start back from you know scratch with uh, back at uh, like level one here within uh, warzone 2.0 you're gonna start back from scratch so it is what it is i guess and then they continue saying, expect to access a standard Battle Royale playlist, Modern Warfare 2 or Warzone 2.0 content, including a new Battle Pass and store bundles, will not be available within Warzone Caldera. So, like, this new stuff will not be available in the previous game, and the previous game stuff will not be available in the new game. They say, uh, double XP and double weapon XP tokens will not be transferable between Warzone Caldera and Warzone 2.0. And while Warzone Caldera won't have an in-game store, COD points will be transferable between all games. They say Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep maps will not be present when Call of Duty Warzone Caldera becomes available to play. For those fans of small Battle Royale maps, expect an exciting developments in Warzone 2.0 during future seasons. Okay, that was kind of a bombshell, which got dropped right there too. So, wait a minute, what? Warzone Caldera won't have an in-game store anymore? That's interesting, so does that mean, to me that means that they're not going to be supporting it, they're not going to be putting out any new bundles within it, but it says it won't have an in-game store, so they're literally just like taking out the store from it, and the store is only going to be accessible through the original games, so through Modern Warfare, through uh, Black Ops Cold War, and through Vanguard? That's interesting. And then they just casually drop in here. Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep maps will not be present within called Warzone Caldera. So, I mean, just like we had leaked, I posted a video about this like two months ago, is that Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep are being removed, are being deleted from Warzone 2. Point, or from 1.0, right? Warzone Caldera when it launches. So literally the only map that will be available within Warzone 1.0 is Caldera. That's it. So, sucks to suck if you know if you enjoy playing Rebirth or you enjoy playing Fortune's Keep, then uh, sucks to suck because the only map you can play is Caldera. And once again, this is another instance of them handicapping the previous game basically to try to encourage players to jump in and play the newest one, which I'm just like, but why? They're still playing Call of Duty. Like, I've never understood this, why they do this. Because this is the whole reason why we never got a multiplayer from Modern Warfare 2 Remastered. Is that we only got that one as a campaign only, and they said it's like, oh, it's because we don't want to take players away from Modern Warfare 2019. It's like, really? They're still going to be playing a Call of Duty game. What does it matter what Call of Duty game they're going to be playing? They're still playing a Call of Duty game. Why can't you just let players have a choice? Well, they always have to be playing the brand new, the newest Call of Duty game. That way they can just get bombarded with new bundles and stuff. And it, you know, it's like, dude, 
why can't they just be happy that I'm playing a Call of Duty game in general? Why do I have to always be playing the newest one? And they basically force you to play the newest one by, I mean, in the previous couple years, they've been doing that by cramming ads in the menu down your throat for the new game. So it's like, if you did not buy Vanguard, every time you booted up Warzone, it's like, Vanguard, buy Vanguard, buy Vanguard, right freaking now. You'd boot up uh, Cold War, it'd be, buy Vanguard, buy Call of Duty Vanguard, go play Call of Duty Vanguard. You'd boot up Modern Warfare 2019, buy Call of Duty Vanguard, right now, go play Vanguard. Uh, screw this game, go play Vanguard. And it's like, dude, why can't I just play the game that I opened and that I want to play? Why are you, like, berating me to play the one you want me to play? Like, honestly, it's kind of ridiculous. But, yeah. So, they have no new news here about whether or not Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep will actually be added into Warzone 2.0. That's what I kind of assumed, is that they're taking them out of Warzone 1, and they will be added into Warzone 2.0 at some point. But they don't even hint at that here. Uh, I can only assume that they'll probably do this within, like, Season 2. Within Season 2, they'll add back Rebirth Island. Season 3, they'll add back Fortune's Keep. Like, Season 4, they'll add in a whole new map or something like that. That way they can just add in a new map every single season. But, uh, I don't know. I'm just like, really? So, they're essentially, they're, they're pretty much just, like, just absolutely handicapping. They're literally just, like, shooting Warzone Caldera uh, in the knees and, and being, like, and just leaving it for dead, essentially. Is They're just like, well, all right, good luck. And uh, I, I just don't get it. I'm just like, why? How are you going to do this to your game that literally only came out three years ago? You guys are basically just going to leave it for dead. You're going to strip it of two of its three maps. And you're just going to go, yep, all right, so long, good luck. And just like not support it basically from here on out. And I guarantee it's probably going to be within less than a year when they're going to cancel and they're going to shut off the servers for Warzone Caldera. And Warzone Caldera is going to be bye-bye and it's going to be completely gone and unplayable at this point. Because, you know, since it's pretty much an online game, you know, I can almost essentially guarantee that uh, you're not going to be able to play it at all at that point. And then, uh, you know, Caldera is going to go the way of Verdansk is and you're never going to be able to play it again. So that's, uh, that's where we're at with Warzone 2.0. So... I kind of went on a little tangent here at the end, so I uh, kind of apologize for that, but uh, at the same time, it is something that I feel is necessary, and uh, I want to hear your guys' opinion on this as well, because what do you guys think about this? Like, yeah, Warzone 2 is probably going to be great, Modern Warfare 2 is great, but what about players who want to still continue playing the old thing? Like, yesterday I did a video on Black Ops 2. Like, can you imagine if, after Call of Duty Ghost came out, if they were just like, alright, so... You know, starting on uh, whatever day Call of Duty Ghost came out. I think that came out in, like, November. So let's just say, like, whatever, November, whatever, you know, 2013, uh, when Call of Duty Ghost comes out, we are going to be putting out an update for Black Ops 2, which removes our Zombies mode and removes our multiplayer modes from Black Ops 2. So, you know, and then we're going to relaunch it as uh, Black Ops 2, but you can only play Transit and you can only play Aftermath in multiplayer, and that's it. You can't play anything else. It's like, what? Why? <laughs> like, it's honestly, it's one of the stupidest things I've ever seen, but... Hey, you know, they, uh, they they have to outdo themselves somehow. So, yep, that's it, though. Warzone 2.0. Warzone 2.0 sounds great. I'm still upset about what they're doing to the original game. And, uh, and I guess we'll just wait and see. Because, I mean, I guess it is what it is. You know, obviously, everybody will be playing Warzone 2.0, and that's what they want. And I will be as well. It's not like I'm going to go back and I'm going to play the original during this time. So I guess I shouldn't complain too much. Because it's like, okay, how many people actually are going to play this original one? But still, it's like... Where is player choice in this? So, anyways, that's gonna do it, guys. Let me know your guys' thoughts on this in the comments down below. We also gonna have another video coming out real soon talking about DMZ and all the details on that mode. Uh, like they said about the blog post, as well as they say that they're gonna also have another thing coming out too, talking more in depth about Warzone 2.0 and uh, different changes and stuff they've made from Call of Duty Next until here at launch too. So make sure you guys also uh, go ahead and preload the game tomorrow. We'll have videos about that going up on the channel if you guys need uh, some help with that, a tutorial about that. So make sure you guys check that out. But that's going to do it, guys. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.